Uh, hello? Hello, friend. Come with me. I can't see. Okay. Hello, my name is Honey Lamb. So this is my first YouTube video. I'm very excited to do it. I'm a little nervous. Um, so I wanted to start off addressing the elephant in the room. I know. This this robe. It's like I know. I know. I found it in layer seven, literally inside a dumpster. Um so so I've currently been living in hell for about uh two and a half years. Um, it's not that bad. It really isn't. Um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, repressed bullshit. There's a lot of souls that are stuck here in a loop of shame and guilt for things that they really shouldn't feel shame and guilt for. I know I was definitely stuck in this sort of loop. I couldn't really get out of it, but once I realized that there was nothing for me to be ashamed of, I just woke up and I got out of the loop. Uh, since most of these souls kind of look already like stuffed animals, a lot of people really seem to like them. Uh, I started posting them on social media actually. And I started on Tumblr. Uh, you might have seen some of them here, a few images of my past uh, handmade trauma toys. So I focus mainly on social media to sort of find homes for these souls. Uh, but you might be wondering what what is a trauma toy? Why? Why are they traumatized? Um, so I'd like to explain a little bit. Do you know what your soul looks like? Inside of every one of us, there is a floating symbolic representation of our purest selves or our soul. For many people, their soul takes shape of their favorite childhood stuffed animal or toy. But for others, it can be anything from violins or dolls to cameras and tools. The soul chooses to represent itself by transforming into the objects or living things that the vessel or human grows deeply fond of during their lifetime. So as you can imagine, the options are endless. The question comes when the vessel dies, and then where does the soul go? Well, amongst many of the humans living today, the belief of heaven and hell is still wildly popular. They believe that if you are good during your lifetime, once you die, your body and soul will be able to separate. This returns your soul peacefully to heaven. But if you commit to a life of sin, then your soul will face the consequences of hell for eternity. Once you arrive in hell, your soul is trapped within your physical body. Every living thing in this realm cannot die and is subjected to endless torture. This never-ending loop of torture eventually transforms the human and their soul into horrifying, distorted versions of themselves. I like to call these souls trauma toys, because although they've been through a lot of pain and trauma in their lifetime, they are still worthy of our love and acceptance. Okay, so now that we understand that part, so I learned the basics of sewing from my mom actually, but I have always just loved watching tutorials online of different techniques and people doing different projects and stuff like that. And so this is why I wanted to, to make this channel actually. Uh, you know, the internet has really crazy ways of connecting people and sort of d dimensions too, I guess. I've been hearing a lot about how it kind of feels like hell on earth right now uh, with the whole pandemic going around and mm, ugly political and social climate. Uh, it's just a really ugly time and a lot of people are bored, stuck in their house, looking for something to do. And so I thought it would be a great time to start showing how I start making my own trauma toys, my handmade trauma toys. You know, in response to how turbulent and kind of negative the world's energy is feeling right now, I sort of want this channel to be just like a beacon of 
creative and positive energy. Uh, I've been really inspired by the ASMR artists that make uh, YouTube videos here on this platform and so I wanted to sort of make my little spin on it and um, make my own sort of relaxing content for you guys. So this crafting activity has been around uh, really since like toys have been made i would imagine it was super popular in like the 90s and the early 2000s so does it really have an owner or a specific creator i definitely don't claim to be the owner creator of this crafting project i've been getting like a few messages every now and then of some people claiming that they're like copying my style or my store and i honestly i like i want you guys to copy me <laughs> It's, it's based on a DIY project, so it's it's entirely possible, and I encourage you guys to get stuffed animals from your house and try this for yourself. This is meant to be a project that you go to the attic and, and use the, the toys from the boxes in, the, in your attic or toys in your closet that you haven't seen for years or something. Give them a new life, maybe give them more meaning and significance to you. It's a super easy and fun activity to do, and so I really encourage you guys to to copy my designs if you want i really don't mind um i actually love it to see i started making uh, my handmade toys because i needed a sort of therapeutic and creative outlet to channel my frustrations if i'm honest uh so i totally want this to be accessible for other people and a thing that i want other people to know that they could do and just have uh, it's just a fun craft and it, and it really doesn't have that many uh materials or so the process and the rest of the tools that you're gonna need are in my book shadows that i have in my living room so let's go check it out <laughs> Where's that tiger? Where's that tiger? Here's that tiger. Where's that tiger? Here's that tiger. Where's that tiger? Here's that tiger. Here's that tiger. Okay. So this is my spell book. This is my grim grimoire. My grimoire. My grimoire. This is the um so this is the map, the Malleus, the Malleus Misuric, Mi, Malleus Mi, So this is the Malleus uh, Misericordium, uh, otherwise known as the, um, the Bad Bitch Bible. Only bad bitches can possess this, um, book. So obviously, so I found this in like layer two, I think. It was inside of some ancient temples. It had a bunch of like weird text in it, couldn't understand a thing, ripped every page out, put a little glitter, you know, I made it gay. And now it's my book of shadows. <laughs> okay, oh god. So let's find the spell one. So I think it was on page 25. Oh, I found it. Oh, I found it right. I found it right here. Okay. Oh gosh. So the spell. Okay, ready? Here we go. A fusion of two with double the brain. A wonderful morning of sunshine and rain. Okay, now that we're inside of my head will show you everything I, you'll need for this project. Here I have a little jar. These are just pins. Some are yellow and some are pearly. And you're also gonna need some needles. I found this little vintage pin cushion that I like to put them in. I have a seam ripper also. Mine's a little bit dirty. It's covered in some glue and fur. I like to use embroidery thread because it's uh, just thicker and more durable. You can make uh, tighter knots with it, I feel. I have scissors. Um, these are my golden scissors. They're really not good at cutting. I have to get new ones. These are my tiny little uh, jingle jangles. They are basically baby rattles that I get from Amazon. They're also the soles of the toys. And so, we're just gonna need to pick one. 
and you're just gonna need two bears you can use any bear really uh, these are just two that i found at my local abandoned thrift store you're also gonna need a place to put the stuffing from all of the toys and so now we're gonna get started with the tutorial okay so to begin we are gonna need to start with taking out every accessory that your toy could have so you're going to want to get your seam ripper so i'm going to take out this little red bow and just put them to the side so we're just going to focus on this one bear right now we got to cut and decapitate it so just use your scissors snip along the front of it all along the side, try to go under uh, the seams of the neck if you can. Once you got it separated, now you have to separate all the stuffing from the inside. I like to clean up all the edges of the heads too, just so that it's easier for me to uh, sew back together. And you want to pull out all the fluffies so that they don't get in your face. And so here I'm just showing the clean edges that I mean. Uh, and this is what it should look like. So now you want to take out the stuffing of your toy. You can use a pencil or a little stick or something to push out uh, the limbs if it's too difficult. To make, uh, just use the stuffed animal skins basically. Okay, so now we have the fully inside out teddy bear skins. This is the torso and the head. And now we're gonna put it aside and now we gotta do the same to this one. Decapitate. And now we gotta pull out its brain. Clean it up a little, you know, pull it inside out. You can take out the muzzle uh, fluff too, and then we gotta defluff the torso as well, the limbs. And now we flip them inside out. And so then we have two teddy bear torsos and heads. And so we're just gonna put the torsos aside and we're gonna focus on the heads for right now. You wanna clean up the edges of, the, of all of them just so that it's easy for you to sew together so you don't have two fabrics making it a thick kind of border. And so I like to put them on the side kind of uh, folded in half and get the front of the, the center of the head of the face, you want to basically just pin them together or sew them together. So you want to grab the thread and the needle, cut a long piece of thread and make a little knot at the end, you know. I like to make two just to make it extra secure and then put it through your needle and then I like to just make my first incision in the, the center of the head through the fabrics, the edges of the fabrics. And you wanna just do them so that they both come together. And then you'll see that they will lay in this sort of direction. And so these are basically the two edges that we have to sew together. So this is the stitch I like to do. Make the first one that gets it really nice and sturdy. And then I like to use a blanket stitch, I think it's called. It's basically you make a little new loop through the, before you fully uh, pull the, the thread through the first stitch. And so that makes a tiny knot basically uh, that just makes it extra secure. 
So here I'm just going around the whole neck hole, connecting the half of the head. Just two halves of the head together should be connected by now. And so now we have the other halves uh, open. So you should start from the center of the middle of the face to the center of the back of the head, basically. And so now we need to just focus on, decide on which torso you would like your uh, finished toy to have. And then start at the center of the back of the neck and connect the center of the back of the head with that, with the same stitch and thread that you had uh, on the head. And so you want to continue with that stitch all the way around the edge, connecting the left head with the left half of the uh, head opening. And so when I got to the shoulder here, there was a kind of a big clump of fabric. And so I just sort of swiveled my needle to clamp them all together. Uh, and then I just sort of stitched over it. Uh, you can sort of do the same trick if you have a, a tough little fold of fabric or edges or seams somewhere too. And then you just want to continue uh, Make sure to have half of the neck hole reach the, the center of it. And so uh, here I'm just continuing on to the right, the left head now, or I think the right head. Just doing the same stitch all around the opening. So here I'm getting near the end, and you just want to make sure to grab uh, the left half of the torso with the right half and, and just combine all the heads again uh, by just stitching all through them, you know? And now you have your head attached to your torso. And so now we want to cut uh, the opposing limbs. I like to do... Uh, I like to do the ones opposite to whatever uh, color the head is. And so we're taking away the left arm and the right leg. And so now we're going to focus on this torso and do the same thing. Just take its left arm and its right leg. And so now we want to combine it basically, just do the same stitch. So I like to get uh, the two edges, basically this corner and then this corner of the arm and you just want to have them be matching. And so think of it as like a cylinder uh, or a tube. You want to just get the two uh, layers of fabric on the top and stitch those together. Uh, try to not get the bottom one or else it's gonna um, not be able to flip inside out again. So you wanna go all the way around with the same blanket stitch. And so here, my, I pulled too hard and my thread broke and I was really upset. But that's okay, you can just make a tiny knot, just start a new thread.
See here, I'm just finishing off the end of the arm. Making a tiny knot. And so now I'm doing the leg and I like to grab one corner of it and the other corner and get the floof out and the other corner and basically just combine them. And so have those match up like that. And then just grab the two top layers of fabric and continue making the same stitch all the way around the two. So here I'm finishing up the leg, just made a little knot and tied it. And so now we have the finished inside out skins of your two headed bag hair. Boop. And so this is what it looks like inside out or flipped right side out. Isn't it cute? So now we gotta put its guts back inside. And I like to start with the heads first. And so here I found that there was a hole in the arm that I didn't see before. And so I ended up actually filling up the arm through that little hole. So it's no big deal, you can use So just get the tummy right. Here I think I just need a little bit more stuffing to get it nice and plump. So here you can definitely see the areas where I need to fix up. And so I'm just doing a ladder stitch to have these seems uh, be a bit invisible. Uh, you basically want to go in and out of the alternating uh, fabrics that you want to combine or uh, stitch together. And then at the end you pull hard and it all kind of merges together in a way that makes the thread disappear. And so here I'm just making a little knot. And here I'm fixing up the, the fabrics that kind of got unraveled in the torso and the neck. So here I got the bow, I'm making a little knot. I like this color blue because I think the blues go well with the brown colors. It's a nice complementary color, I would say. And so these are the little pendants that I've made here for my toys. And so you want to stab the middle of the bow. It's a little, it's actually really difficult to do this. I kind of wiggle it uh, a lot of the time and it's, uh, you just sort of want to wiggle it through and, and keep adding pressure until it goes. Uh, but I would recommend maybe getting an adult to help you if uh, you're a bit scared with needles or if it's too difficult.
And so then, now that you're through the middle of your bow, you can add any pendant or charm to hang from the bow. And so you just loop it through, and then you want to stab it all the way back through the bow. So this part was kind of difficult. I struggled a little, but I eventually got it. And here I'm just adjusting how I want the charm to lay. And now I'm just securing the bow uh, directly to the toy. And then I like to cut my ends of the ribbons uh, while folded in half so that they are cut in this triangle sort of ribbony pattern. And then that's it. You got yourself a two-headed bear, a trauma bear. Oh God, I'm sorry. I was in a deep meditative, uh, meditative trance. That was the first tutorial, wow. Okay, so now that we've finished with the tutorial, I have a little announcement to make. My yearly Halloween contest, it is back this year. I know. And this year's prizes are Shadow, Tummy Tum, and Pansy. And so all you have to do to submit to this contest is as follows. Okay, that's it for my first video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm really excited about being an internet content creator now. I really hope you enjoyed and found it relaxing. There's so many things that I would like to do with this channel. I plan to use this channel to post a bunch of different handmade toy designs and I would eventually love to show you guys around and show the creatures or the plants that live here. But until then, my name is Honey Lamb. Um, and I don't really have an outro yet, so if you have, have an idea of something that would be cool, uh, please comment down below. <laughs> comment down below. Okay, bye. Thank you for watching. I love you. <laughs>